just outside of the uh, Peterborough, Peterborough box. Inside the Peterborough box, and he's, he's had the shot, he's gone! What a fantastic goal! Hello there, everybody, and welcome to the Batball Podcast. We are here for episode 80. Yes, we are back to regular uploads on a Sunday, and uh, we've been waiting for it for a while, I know, and I promise to bring back some great guests. So recently, we've had the likes of Jimmy Groves, Ash Hudson just before that, and lastly, we had uh, Ben Dore actually on the podcast. So make sure you go and listen to that on Spotify, or it's even on YouTube now as well at The Media Man, uh, that encases all my kind of uh, journalistic stuff on there. Um, today... We've got an absolutely awesome guest. Now, um, I would say that I've known Megaphone Man, um, as he is known to the, the, the forest, the forest massive, as I'm going to call us now. Um, I've known you for uh, not actually that long, really, because we did we meet on a we met on a door on tour. We did. Too. We met on door on tour. I, I believe mm. it's about, I don't know, five, maybe. Yeah, around five months ago, somewhere around. There. Yeah. And it's, it's gone quick, hasn't it? It has gone quick. The time has passed, hasn't it? Absolutely. And, and I know that you you are also a keen Forest fan, but in today's podcast, it's going to be more of a, he's, a, he's showing off the shirt. I mean, I've got a Roma shirt on today, so I've just, I've just got everything. I've got my Inter Milan shirt in there that I've just ordered. It's wicked. Yeah, you're a football fan. I understand. And that's it. But and, and we spoke about Forest with Mr. Dore, obviously on that YouTube yeah. video and uh, on my last podcast, but today's is not going to be as focused on Forest, um, mainly because my nerves are building up and I'm like trying not to think about it as much. But um, we're going to be talking about the state of football, but before we get to that, I just wondered if you could tell people a little bit about you. Uh, me, uh, just just in general, I'm a football fan. Obviously, I love Forest. I, I'm a lifelong Forest fan. Been been brought up through my dad. Uh, he used to play for Forest up to the age of under 18s. He was friends with Evans, and that's by the by. But I've just thought, I just love football. Like I'll watch other teams' games. Especially if Forest aren't playing, if it's Premier League, not so much Italian football. I, I apologise. I just I used to find it boring, and I've not been able to go back to it since. But just in general, same as anyone else, same as same as any other person, I'm just a fan of football. I love the game. Obviously, at times it's been painful watching Forest, and yeah, it's just my passion other than what I do for my job. Yeah. And and um, that's amazing. Obviously, we're both football fans, and obviously, I think I like the Italian league a little bit more than you might do by the sounds of it. Then, um, but I mean, it's not my go-to. Don't get me wrong. Um, but we're going to be talking about football as a whole. Now, football has changed a lot since perhaps your dad's generation, your yeah. granddad's generation, and uh, and certainly my generation, because the the football that you watched growing up will be actually significantly different to the football that we are now watching. You know, I've actually been brought up to watch. Um, and I think the first thing that we can mention is is finances in regards to 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 football. I mean, you know, you got the first million pound player, which, if I'm not mistaken, was Trevor Francis. Trevor Francis. At well, Forest. it was actually a pound short. Was it a pound short? It was a pound short. Yes, it was. Yep. I never yeah. knew that. So what I don't was know that? Why like they did it? But that's the way they did it. Wow. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. That wouldn't it be a million pound man. That was a, such one. a cluffy thing to do, though, isn't it? Oh, 100%. You watch him in the interviews. He was fantastic. He's a, you, but you don't see managers like that anymore. You know, it yeah. wouldn't... This is why I think, like, managers... I mean, I say managers, obviously. Roy Keane's taken a bit more of an assistant manager slash coach role in his latest kind of endeavours. But, you know, it hasn't really worked out that well for him. You know, no. managers like that just don't survive anymore. It's a short tenure, isn't it, as a manager? So... It's, it's kind of put up or, or go, isn't it? Get the results. It's a results, it's a results game. It's not, even, it's not even necessarily a game anymore, is it? It's a business. When you mm. look at today's finances, it, it's, not, it's based on results solely. It's not, there's not a lot of loyalty in football anymore. From, from when, when you compare it to the 80s and 90s, which I grew up on, uh, to what it is now, the money is just astronomical. It's just craziness. Where, where does it end? Where does and, it end? And to think what would be previous transfer uh, payments, let's yes. say £500,000 and now even a million pound for a player. Yeah. You're right, and we still see that, obviously, in the Championship and other leagues. That's actually a weekly wage now to some players. Um, and in particular, we mentioned in the pre-chat, um, Kylian Mbappe. Um, and he's just signed a new deal with PSG, which, if I'm not mistaken, is going to make him just over a million pounds a week and he's going to be getting all sorts of authority around it, the, the the club that it just seems ridiculous listen, J- jamie it's it's hard to get your head around it like 
he doesn't need the money. What is he going to do with, I believe it's it works out, he'll get something like 100 million a year. He's got a 300 million uh, dollar or pound or whatever it is, euros, sign on fee. It's just, where, where do you draw the line? It's just creeping up and creeping up. It's getting to the point where football is not sustainable. Not, mm. not when figures, how can you compete with that? And it's not just that that hurts me. Kylian Mbappe is one of my favourite players. So it's not a dig at him. If you was in his shoes and someone threw that at you, hands up, you're going to take it. So I can't fault him, but it's this power that players now have. Since when has a player had a right to tell a manager who to sign or not to sign or tell the manager who they should pick or shouldn't pick or who the sporting director or manager should even be? That For me, that's just crossed the line that should never have gone. How, how can you give a player that kind of power? I mean, essentially, he owns PSG at that rate. I mean, I mean, you know, I just, you know, I get the hype around Kylian Mbappe because he deserves it and he's earned it That's because it, he's a very good player. Um, he's a provenly good player. Um, he is a consistent player, you know. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, for that kind of money, I'd be expecting another squad of players. But, but that's what he should be, a player. Yeah. No more. It should, it should end up player. Yeah, they, they can have, players do have opinions or... You know, I know this this player, he's a good player. Maybe we should look at him. But it shouldn't go any further than that, as in who to appoint, who not to appoint, who to sell. I've never known it. It's just, it's football's gone mad. I, I can't think of any other way to put it. It's where There's got to be a line somewhere because it's getting ridiculous. It's out of control. And, it, and it, the worst thing is, it's the big clubs, obviously PSG um, and Real Madrid have submitted their own things on it. But let's be completely honest, Real Madrid were paying ridiculous amounts for Gareth Bale when he signed. I mean, he yeah. must have been on, what, near on half a million plus a week. And yeah, that was in, what, 2014, maybe? Mm -hmm. So if I'm being completely honest, I think Real Madrid are just hypocrites for doing that. Yeah. Um, and I think all the clubs that are complaining about it, they're doing the same um, thing. Am I shocked, Jamie? No. And I'll tell you why. Look at them when they all tried to break off into that Super League all in their own, all the self-entitled big clubs. It, it, it's having a really bad effect on all, all these lower league clubs from the championship, from all around the world, all these lower clubs, when these big clubs just feel they've got a right to just dominate and be football. Football's supposed to be for everyone. But back in my dad's time and even going through when I was a kid, it, it was a working man's game. It, it, it was, you know, it was a social thing for the working man and everyone could get involved and take part. Now it's just, things are astronomical. Even prices of boots and things like that, just so hard for families nowadays and I just where, when's it going to stop is it just going to be an elitist game or you know are they going to let normal people be able to be involved because the way it's heading it's not it's not looking like that is it exactly. yeah and it's and it's not even just the playing bit of it it's the it's the the spectating bit of it you know um I would like to say that I'm in a fortunate position where with my job I can go um and when I'm not working I can go with my dad. So I've got that privilege. But, you know, there's, there's yeah. kids out there, there's families out there, especially now, where, you know, they can't go. And people go, well, it's not a necessity to go. But it's like, well, you know, it's okay people not, you know, people not having, okay, loads of money to go and spend on shoes, whatever. Yeah. But they should have the right to have at least some luxury in their life. Otherwise, they're working just to live. And that yeah. is it. Nothing more to it. And I think, you know, football... It's leisure, it's fun, it's... It's life for people. It Jim. is. It is life. Football was always life for me growing up. So for someone to say, oh, well, because they can't go, it, it doesn't matter. It does matter. Hmm. I know when I was a kid, my dad couldn't afford to take me. I, I was quite old when I actually... I watched Forest all my life on the radio, as it was back then, on the BBC, on, on, the, on the Sunday lunchtime, whatever. Back, back then as a kid, my dad couldn't afford to take me. Hmm. imagine what it'd be nowadays it, it, it's crazy i mean my ticket for wembley in the nosebleed seat is 64 pound and that's just for the ticket never mind anything else i mean and the that's level still five that. players really tiny they can just about see them <laughs> you know and, it's just it's madness isn't it and, and that's what concerns me and i think you know, the, all the talk with the, the stadium expansions of various clubs. And I, th I think the reason that I like the fact that Forest haven't gone and doubled the capacity, which I think will be unrealistic anyway, because the land that we've got is essentially, yeah. you can't really use much more of it. Um, it you, you can see clubs all around the world like Tottenham. I mean, they've, they've built a beautiful stadium, don't Fantastic get me wrong. Fantastic stadium. 
But come on, let's be honest. I mean, what quality is it for the fans? You just It's a commercial thing. It, um, yeah, it's I, all I about like money and business. They end up as soulless bowls. I mean, look at Derby County and Leicester, for example. Soulless bowls, no atmosphere. They're going to hate me for saying it, but it's true. Look at Hull as Where's well. Where's your atmosphere gone? Hull. Hull was, I, I went to Hull on the, yep. the last league away day, I think it was, and that was, I'm, I'm sorry because I like all the people at Hull, but that was dreadful. I mean, there was nobody, you, you, did you go to the Hull away? I went the Boxing Day right before the pandemic and they had the whole of the top tier closed off. I know Forest fans got it this time, but it was empty. It was mainly Forest fans in behind one goal. And then the rest of the ground, they had a few fans dotted around. Then the whole top tier closed off. It was empty. Yeah, because they, they have they have that top it? bit. Um, like most of it was closed off. The like the lower part of it wasn't. Um, and the rest of it was closed. You know, I just it was just dead steep, and it was a, it was just yeah, it was a bowl, and I, I didn't enjoy. It. I mean, is, the whole fans weren't loud. Anyway. Is it because of ticket pricing though? Is it because it's not accessible? Because clubs to be able to compete need as much revenue as possible. So is mm. it that they're putting up so high that not every not every family when it should be for everyone can afford to go. But then, because players are getting these vast wages and the fa- the vast costings of everything else that comes with probably running a football club, which we're not privy to, um, you know, I-, I think on that scale of things, Bayern Munich's got it right. They charge really low for their season tickets. I think it's mm. about 100 to 150 quid. So even a lot of working class people that don't have a lot of money can still go and enjoy the football. And I think they've got it right. And I think that's how it should be. You know, that, that, but that's, that's the big difference happening. between, and I think this is what I admire about German football. I mean, fifty percent of the club is owned by the fans, yes. so yes. you know, and and I think that's an approach that we should have taken. I think we're too deep into it now. It's it's almost impossible because I mean, clubs are owned by investment funds. I, I think and, there's one or two English clubs that are where the fans are pretty much own it or the majority of of the club, so to speak. It's not enough, though, is it? You know, out of the ninety two, I mean, it's just not enough. Unfortunately, I mean, no. you've seen what sole owners have done to clubs and I mean I, you know this is in no disrespect to Alan but Notts County with Alan Hardy I mean you can look at the result last night and the staying in the National League and Alan's on Twitter going oh well you know I put everything into this club and it's like well you know you can chuck money at something but you're not spending it efficiently you're not spending well, it well clearly enough his structure wasn't correct exactly the top, oh, with the money he put in they should have been up no doubt about that no but it doubt. was spent wrong and this is the problem with Notts County and and this is Unfortunately, the issue with a lot of other clubs, and I think Forest in the past actually. Well, Forest had the same with uh, Fawaz, didn't we? Yeah. You know, I, I think his his head. I won't say his heart. I'll say his head was in the right place in terms of his vision and what he wanted to do, but he was totally clueless on actually how to do it and what it takes in the championship. As as Marinakis has fall, uh, found out, I've not necessarily been his biggest fan, but he he's realised his mistakes. And he's put the right structure in place, the right team in place, Cooper, Murphy, everyone else behind the scenes. Um, Fawaz just didn't do that. He got his mates in. He had his mates who were clueless running the club and he was paying them big money. And mm. it just really backfired. You know, it's about getting the structure correct, isn't it? Absolutely. I, I think, you know, when it comes to um, when it comes to Fawaz and stuff, you know, Marinakis ran the risk uh, of becoming potentially worse than him. You know, if I'm um, let's be completely honest, if he didn't appoint Steve Cooper and Dane Murphy yeah. and you know, and all the coaching yes. staff weren't retained, I'm going to be completely honest, we would have been relegated to League One. Yeah. Um, and what? potentially I can see you know him selling the club and us being completely in the shit. You know, sorry, I, I, I stand corrected on him because I wasn't his biggest fan and I didn't like what I was seeing, and I think it was because at the time he did have the wrong staff, but he has changed my opinion on him somewhat with what he's done, like, say, with Murphy and the other stuff he's doing behind the scenes. So, I, on that respect, I have to hold my hands up as a Forest fan. You know, we are going in the right direction. It does seem like his son's now getting involved. It does seem like he has got a bit of heart for the club. Where I was always a bit dubious about this relationship because, obviously, Olympiacos is his first love. And, whether, and the fact that he's not over here a lot, whether he was actually bothered. Obviously, time will tell if we're getting the premiership and see what happens, how much he is bothered, I think, you know. Mm. Do you, so do you think, and I mean, I don't want to go off on a forest tangent, but like, no, 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 no. do you think that there is a possibility that if we got to the Premier League and stayed there, that he would sell the club? Or do you think he'd keep it? 
No, because that's where the money is, isn't it? He's, mm. First and foremost, he's a businessman. Football, again, probably the same as us, is a passion for him. And he has got a love for it. I, I think I, I'm starting to see that. Um, as a businessman, you would be silly to sell. If you can get it right, like I dare, dare say it, Arsenal owners, they always seem to run the club in profit, don't they? They don't spend big, but they seem to not always get the correct balance, but they seem to run the club at a profit. They don't lose. If you can run a club at a profit, why would you walk away? If it becomes where it's a big burden, it's eating away at your own personal funds, you're going to go, aren't you? Hmm. If he gets us in that promised land, he's learned now from the championship how, how it works and how to run it. And the premiership won't be much different, but it's whether we can compete on what money comes in. Yeah, and and you know, in in reference to not just the Premier League but the ninety two, yeah. um, you know, we've seen clubs like Bury go under, yeah, um, and we can say what we want about Derby, but you know, I'm, it was Wimbledon. They they Wimbledon, went, didn't they? Yeah, um, oh God, it, Bolton, I think Bolton were close. They were Bolton. they were close. Even we, sorry to mention Forest again, but even mm. we was near administration, wasn't we? At one we were. point. And, you know, and people can say what they want about Derby because, I mean, obviously, I don't like Derby. I'm not a Derby fan. No, you know, no. you've got to think for all the staff that, you know, have already lost their jobs or could potentially lose their jobs. It's not yeah. done yet. You know, yeah. um, the, 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 the players that went without pay for a bit and you can say what you want about player salaries, but, you know, people deserve to get paid, you know, and for the fans, um, we can say what we want about Derby fans. You know, we've had our things on Twitter. But of course. It's... So my, my question is on that to you, Jamie. In terms of when the club are in that much turmoil, not all the players, but a lot of players have got a lot of money in the bank, even at Derby. Some of them have been there a long time, earned really good wages. Some of the players are new, so I'd understand them not doing it. But do you feel that these players that's got millions in the bank could have put their wages to one side until the club's secure financially and then maybe in the future got something back? You, you know what I mean? Do you think they could have done that to help the club? Do you think oh, they should absolutely. have done that? Absolutely. I mean, rather it's... than still taking a wage while they're struggling. Absolutely. You know, there's no need. You know, I I agree, but I I think more in terms of maybe the uh, the very younger players that maybe aren't on much of a wage. You know, I mean, we're exactly. talking maybe less than a thousand pound a week. Some of these guys. Yeah. You know, and for them, okay, perhaps they're not you know living in their own house yet or whatever. But you know, the people our age they or whatever. They still needed a wage. Yeah, but, they still need a way. People like, for example, uh, I'm going to say the name Tom Lawrence. There's no way he needed the wage. That guy, that guy was earning anything, I believe, from 27 to 35 a week. That would have helped the club just for him to say, "Look, we'll put my wage on hold." Obviously, in the future, when you've got stability, then give him, give him it when the club's financially sound. Just, just he's just an example. There's probably many that was like that, you know, well, that's it, the new Darby, because they play high, they pay high wages, Darby. Um, but that's their downfall, isn't it? That's ultimately, I mean, you can say what they want about the running of the club, but I think mm. that has to be mentioned. The amount that you're paying players, and I think Forrest have made some mistakes on this with Harry Arter, um, yeah. and now oh, we're seeing in the Premier League, you, I won't mention his name again, because he's IOP goes. Um, but, you know, you I can, hope not sign him. Oh, oh, I hope not to have him. You can have him. The club yeah, be under have him for minutes. free. Yeah, have him have for him. free, but wait till you see that wage slip. Oh, my. I mean, it's, it's an average transfer. It'll be a fall act. from grace for him, though, won't it? But again, he, he's going to be financially sound. He's been on a lot of lot of money at Forest for what? It'll work out about three-year contract on a hell of a lot of money that most of us have probably never earned in our life. You know oh, of course, I mean? no. I mean, so. Do you know the sad thing about that is, is I actually really rated Harry Arter when he moved to Forest, yep, and I, I was so well. gutted when he did I was happy when we signed him. I was, I was like, oh my god, we signed him from Bournemouth. They'd just come out of the Premier League, I think, or they may have still been there. Fulham, he was that, wasn't he? He was, was signed him from Bournemouth. Or was it Fulham? Well, he was on loan at Fulham, wasn't he? He scored that wonder yes. goal against us when we lost to him. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. So, uh, and you know that feeling of having him coming from two very good clubs, and I'm, you know, yeah. Bournemouth and Fulham are good yeah. clubs, whatever people say, yeah. um, was amazing. But obviously, he's just, I don't know, he's a bit older, and I'm, I'm liking the fact that Forest don't sign you know, the 35-year-olds anymore. I mean, you know, Daryl Murphy actually did score quite a few important goals. Yeah, I'll give him yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, but Glenn Murray, I mean, uh, nice guy, but come on. like it's... He scored a, a couple, but then it, it was like it almost got too much for him, wasn't it? Yeah. The whole ethos at Forest has changed. Now we're starting to bring in young talent, as you've seen with Jed Spence. We've got our own academy coming through. Um, 
you know, bringing players like Jono through, Yates, Worrell. They're just examples of a line of many that's come through for us. And this is why, for example, I want us in the Premiership because I don't want to lose those kind of players. We've always ended up selling them just for the financial stability side of things. That's why I want to be in the Premiership. I'm happy to, to go up and then we finish, you know, we, we finish 16th or whatever, just to stay in for the financial stability of the club because the money's so vast in the Premiership compared to anywhere else. It's a special, special time to be a Forest yeah. fan. And I think, you know, we can look at the league and go, yeah, we're going to be playing some massive teams. And I think so I think Mr. Dorr definitely is going to be looking forward to some away days. You know, if we do get there, there's some yeah. incredible grounds, there's some incredible teams in that league. Um, but I think financial wise, um, for clubs that are going up, it's important. And I mean, I'm not talking about Fulham and Bournemouth because they've got parachute payments. Yes. So I think they haven't experienced what we have at least no, for a good no, few no. years. Because you've got to give credit to Bournemouth. It, they've come up and they've done well. But Even Huddersfield to an extent, they had their time yeah. in there and they've recently had parachute payments. OK, me, I'm not sure if... It, I don't think it lasted for this season, but in recent years gone by, they've had a lot of money back from that premiership, from their stint in there. We've not had that. And, and, that's the, and that is testament to how good the, you know, the running of the club is at the moment. Get, say okay then here's something for you say Forrest get in because I saw this discussion on online the other day what mm. what people thought say Forrest get in the premiership then we come down okay obviously great for us parachute payments but do you think parachute payments are right it's like Burnley's going down apparently they're getting 80 million just for the first season do you agree with it I mean Burnley for one they're in 112 million pounds debt yeah. So I mean they're still in they're still very much you know bad um, but even then yeah eighty million I don't I, I think there has to be a degree of parachute payment but I think the scale of which they're paying it at the moment isn't good because I mean you know people can say what they like about oh yeah but you've just come from the prem you've got to have some money but it's like well you know the amount of commercial bonuses that you actually lose from being relegated it's massive but whether it's the amount that they're giving it. A, I don't See, think it is. For me, it's a double-edged sword because obviously Forest have all using for I hate keep using Forest as an example, but we're a perfect example. Like people say, oh, but we're coming down from the Prem, we've got all these Premier wages. Sell your players. Mm. Sell your players and, and, and buy players that are on less wages that are championship quality, like the rest of us have had to do. Yeah. Balance, balance it out a little bit. You're still gonna get a lot of money for these players. Oh, and I agree. My only concern <laughs> for that would be, I mean, I do have to see the both sides, yeah. is that if you do if you do do that and you end up being relegated again, the commercial loss is going to be even more devastating. I mean, we'll just look at Sunderland, for example. I mean, they literally just went down, 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 and that, and that was it. And that's but devastating. The, but the thing is, how can you come down with a premiership team, then get all that money that potentially can cover the premiership wages? It's a massive advantage on the rest of the league. Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't always work where they go straight back up. But there's, there's millions of teams where it has. Fulham, Norwich, just as a couple of examples, uh, Bournemouth after two years. You know what I mean? Because the money's there. In, in January, Bournemouth, for example, spent a lot of money. I mean, Fulham at the start of the season, I think they spent about £26 million on players. I mean, that's but, just unheard of, isn't Forrest it? is mean, an example. I think we spent a few million. Yeah, I think... Like, our team's you know, worth what? I can't remember how much our team was worth, like 20 something. They said 36 million on Sky Sports, but I don't I don't necessarily I don't think that's that. true. I think, it's less. It, I think it's a lot less. It's only because players like Jono now have a value and have a high value. You know, so yeah, so even then, like so that. let's put actually what we paid for them. I think Bree Samble was two and something million. Uh, yeah. Scott McKenna was maybe a million. I think. Around three with a little bit to add on, I believe, if we go up. Yeah, so that's five million there. Cook was John the Academy. Exactly. So so Jono's Academy, Worrell's Academy, Yates', Yates Academy, Academy. Mighton Academy. And then James then Garner is on loan. It's... Spence on loan, Zinkenagel on loan, Davis on loan. I just, uh, I think, you know, if you're Sorry. looking at, yeah. I think it's don't worry about it. It's, I think if you're Sky Sports and you were looking at those value, I actually think the value of the squad's higher than 36 million if we're going for the value, not how if, much we yeah, pay. If, for if it. you're going to sell them on what their value is now worth, then yes, the, the squad it would be in relation to that, wouldn't it? I mean, but if you're telling me that Johnson was worth 20 million at Christmas, 
then it'll be worth 30 million now. I don't personally, and and I rate Johnson highly, by the way. He's like one, probably my favourite Forest player this year. He's come on massively. Yes. And he's definitely defied the critics. But I don't think he's worth that much yet. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's football in faith. I suppose what it is, Jamie, it's you can see what he's done in League One. He smashed it. First season in the Championship, he smashed it. You you buy in, okay, not the finish. Cycle that makes sense. You are buying the potential. The fact is, the championships. I, I hate to say it and sound cocky, quite easy for him. So he, he's definitely whether it's a lower standard Premiership player, a middle, whatever. He's a, he is all day long. He can take that next step. And the fact he's only twenty one, I suppose that's what you pay him for. But and that, and that brings me to my next point. Actually, it's about youth prospect and the buying of youth prospects and how good, how important recruitment is. Um, yeah. Because we see from Man United, who are a prime example, and I hate this because I do actually really like Man United. Uh, I'm just mm. checking if there's any Man United pictures behind me. There's not, so I'm not going to get released <laughs> on YouTube. Okay. Um, but, you know, Man United have just bought big. They've bought big names over yeah. the years. And, I mean, do do not think that I'm discredited any of these players because most of them are good, but they've been coached wrong and managed wrong. Right? Yeah. Di Maria, fantastic player. Edison Cavani, fantastic player. Ronaldo, I think, whoever's managing them, do do well. Yeah. Still quality, but they're buying these big names, you know. And as much as I think Ronaldo was a tactical buy, I think he was a commercial buy um, mm. to save the club from going under because people are going to buy, do sponsorships, shirts, yeah, and just for that. But I've just had a notification from Zoom. We've got ten minutes, so yeah, I, I, I can see that. <laughs> you just saw I, that. I was going to um, say it kind of, in one respect, it kind of contradicts what I was saying earlier about Bournemouth spending big. I believe that has helped him this season. That helped him keep up and hold on to second. But spending doesn't always work. And plus, there's a difference yeah. between spending big and spending smart. Yeah, and, you know and I, I mean? think that's what Forrester are doing. Agreed. I think that with Murphy in place and, and Cooper, we're, you know, we're looking around everywhere. We're not just going, right, we'll buy that big name. When, when I'll hold my hands up, I'll be one of the first to say, I was unsure about Surridge. I was unsure about Davis. But wow, have they proved me wrong? They I, have I proved agree. me wrong. And I absolutely love them players. Surridge we got for two or 2.2 million. Davis on loan, you know, and everyone was like, I can remember all the Derby fans because I go on a lot of the forums. They were they were laughing. Who's Davis? They were who you signed this nobody. Now nah, look at him. What a player. But it just goes to show, you know, don't judge. I mean, I I remember I think it was when Surridge first came into the squad and we were I was waiting outside near the Robin Hood suite. Um, and I saw him and I said hello to him and, you know, he was very quiet. He was just by himself. He was just very kind of laid back a little bit and he was, you, can, you can tell he's a bit nervous, but yeah. you know, I, I, I still don't think that we should play him to start with in the final. Oh, I mean, you're that might be controversial, Sunday. but on it's Sunday. Davis for me. Yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Just... Yeah. Yeah. I think use Davis as a battering ram where the defense down, bring a sort of with, with his pace yeah. and his prowess and his, his finishing ability. I finish just don't think I think you can say, you know, you got the hat trick and stuff, you know, what, yeah. a month ago or whatever. And, and that was a fantastic game. But I don't know if he's the full 90 minutes or the first 60 minutes kind of striker at this but, point. Well, this is, this is the beauty of having a squad, isn't it? We've yeah. now got one that we can interchange if we need to or depending on how the game's going. Like, for example, Davis, when he came on against Sheffield United in that second leg, he gripped the game, didn't he? And we at that point we needed it because the ball just wasn't sticking. And that's no disrespect to Surridge. He worked his socks off. It just at that point, the way how physical Sheffield United was, it just wasn't happening. So it, it players like that changed the game. It might it's not, yes, goals win games, but it's not always all about the goals. It's it's what mm. happens off the ball and on the pitch that makes it happen. I mean, off the pitch, Forrest were, and I think one thing that you may have made this observation, Steve Cooper didn't let them go down the tunnel. Did yeah. you see that? He made them wait until Sheffield United you know, went down. You know how important that is. And yeah. I mean, you know, people can just observe it as just something that's happening. No, it it's is not. psychological aspect, isn't it? Yeah, he's saying, look, we're calm. You know, you're all trying to make out like we're the one, you know, mm. you're making us go crazy, but we've just flipped it we on. We made them wait calm. as well, didn't we? When, yeah. they, when they came back on, we made them wait after half time. Good. And I like that. And I like that element because, you know, Steve Cooper's not a bad, a nasty person either. He's not a person that is, you know, out there to be, a, you know, rude about anything. He's a nice no. guy. You know, he's, and he has he's a very shrewd manager. Very. Tactically, 
and mentally. He, he's he's changed the mental ethos of Forest totally, and, 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 and I'm the fans loving it. It's like he's managed the fans as well. I mean, you yes. know, I've not seen an atmosphere like it for no, no, no. forever, you know. And to be able to co- cover Forest uh, for what my first six months doing it. Yeah. And, you know, to be able to think, well, when I was told, do you want to go over to the forest? I was like, oh, you know, 18th place, but I love forest. I'm going to go over, you know, and to have been able to watch every game and say, oh, my God, we might actually get top six this year. Do you reckon we'll yeah. get it? Or I don't know. You know, it's it, just... Under Hewton, there was just no connection. It was just, I was going to games and my head was like this. I was watching it, but I was just like, I'll turn up. And I wasn't looking forward to turning up. I was happy about meeting everyone else for a pint in the pub before, knowing what I was going to. And it's that's a social thing. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was because I was dreading the game. Obviously, I still went. I got a season ticket. Of course, I'm going to go. But it was just so painful to watch. And the transformation is just remarkable. What, what Cooper's done, we go up, we don't go up. He's done a fantastic job. And we've just got to stick, stick him out. We've got to stick with him because that's he does funny. seem to love the club. I'm not worried about someone else coming in and trying to take Cooper because I don't think he'll go. I think he loves the club. I know from what I've seen, his family loves the club and we're just going the right direction. We've just got to stick by him, even if things aren't going great. You know, obviously Sunday's, Sunday's massive. So it's all on that. Sunday but, is massive. Absolutely. And, and we're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully I might see you there. I might see you. I mean, yeah, it's a I'm, big in stadium. The, I'm in the nosebleed seats. But I'll be around Wembley before. So I'll have on. to climb Everest come to get and up say hello. Nice. Yeah, I'm in the gods. But Is... listen, I'm just happy to be there, you know, just to I... see the team. I've been to Wembley once before, and that was to watch England versus Brazil. I've never been uh, to see Forest, So this is just, yeah, it's just special. It's going to be immense. And I'm hoping that Forest play like Prime Brazil uh, come Sunday. <laughs> That'd be um, nice, wouldn't it? It would be nice if Ronaldinho, what, 20 years younger, they just uh, jumps Catherine. on the pitch. Oh, we've got, oh, we've got the Cafu. What a player we've got he is. The Cafu. The Cafu. <laughs> He's passionate. I love Cafu. Um, yeah. But we've got, oh, well, Zoom's kicking us off. So um, it's been great to chat to you. I mean, I don't know where. I know 35 minutes just went. Um, it's, it's amazing. We'll chat for longer, really, can't we? Uh, we, we if Zoom would allow it. <laughs> if, in fact, actually, that brings me to my point, actually. We will do another one. Um, we will do another one. Um, we're going to look at new software to record on. So I thought I'd let you all know. If this does well, um, which it will if you share, subscribe as well now. Uh, like and follow, subscribe, guys. Like, like and subscribe, drop us a comment um, and make sure that you follow us on Twitter. If you want to drop your handle, you absolutely can. Um, so, yeah. Also, like and subscribe to Door on Tour if you haven't. Yes. Obviously, what Jamie does, what Rads does, what Door on Tour does, fantastic. Especially even if you're just a football fan, just to see the passion, the emotion, the ups and the downs. Even if you don't like Forest. Just, just subscribe because you'll enjoy watching it, whether you're laughing or or you're not. You you will enjoy it. It's great viewing. Forest and yeah, football vlogging as a whole, um, fantastic. Yeah. And I think Forest, I think we're especially probably the best, I would say. So anything, anybody bar Derby, Derby vloggers, right? Um, yeah, ignore so, Derby vloggers. No one wants Derby. them. We don't want them. I'll give Huddersfield their dues. They're probably a little bit better, but. Nah, Darby, no thank you. Um, but yeah, subscribe to all the channels mentioned. Rads, uh, Door on Tour, me if you can. Um, we gained a couple of subscribers last night, which was nice. So we're five off 100 as of now. Uh, we're nice. recording on yeah. Wednesday, though. So hopefully we're on 100 by Sunday um, and 10,000 by next Sunday. Um, but yeah, let's let's just keep working on it. And uh, I thank you all very much for your support. It's been great talking to you, uh, Megaphone Man. Um, Listen, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. It's nice to come on. I, I love talking football. So for me, it's easy, you know. We're going to be talking football again very soon, trust <laughs> me. So keep an eye on this space. Uh, and that was me and Megaphone Man talking all things football, bit of forest, bit of football, finances, a little bit about Mr. Marinakis as well. We didn't get onto the bakery thing, but we'll get onto that for the next one. So <laughs> that was episode 80 with me and Megaphone Man. Cheers, thank everybody. you. Thank you all very much for listening. Bye-bye.